About a month ago, I made a video about five lesser known romance languages, and as you can see, it has become my most popular video. I like that like to dislike ratio, uh, as well as plenty of comments, including this one from Gazuan Tight. Um, so thank you for that. My name is Che, and let's get started. Disclaimer, before I get comments like this, I want to emphasize that some of these languages on the list are debatably just dialects. I will mention which ones when we get to them. So right, let's jump straight in. The first language we're going to be looking at is Magleno Romanian, also known as Magleno Romance. Now, before I go on to the next slide, you can look at the map and see just such a small area it's spoken. Uh, it's spoken in the uh, border, but the main city it's spoken in is Gevdelia, and this is a photograph of Gevdelia in the background. It's the best photograph I could find. Honestly, there's not many photographs of the place. Um, but let's get on to this. So, Glenoromanian is spoken in Greece and North Macedonia. Uh, it's recognised as an official language in North Macedonia, and as I mentioned in my last video about the Romance languages, uh, so is Aromanian. This is not Aromanian, however, it is completely different. Uh, this language has about 5,000 native speakers. That is uh, as of 2002, so that's quite an old statistic. Uh, it exists in the Balkan Romance uh, subbranch of the Romance languages, um, and just like all of these, it is due to the Roman Empire. Uh, it is close to Aromanian and Istro Romanian, but it is completely different. It's also been influenced by the South Slavic languages. And you can really see it, it does look South Slavic. If you look carefully, you will spot um, words of Romance origin. So that first sentence, Anamum Ayor Plin de Cal Albi, apparently it means my horse is full of uh, white horses, uh, sorry, my stable is full of white horses. And you can kind of see Plin is a bit like Plena, like where we get the um, word plenty, which means, and Plena means full in Latin. D of cal, like cavalry or uh, cavallo, or cavallo, all of those sort of things. Uh, that's horse and albi, like um, the Latin word alba, meaning white, where we get like words uh, such as Albania and Albion. And I can't remember what this second sentence means. It's something about a red horse. So uh, it was a random sentence I found. Uh, and that's a sample of the language. You can see how it is different to Aramanian and Istro Aramanian. Uh, so let's move on. So for our next language, before I get comments like this, I'm going to warn you, some people don't class this as its own language. So Aranese is spoken in Spain. It's in the Catalonia Autonomous Community. And Catalonia recognises Aranese as an official language uh, and as a protected language. Uh, it has an estimated uh, 2,600 native speakers, and that's plus another 2,100 uh, or more, perhaps there are more native speakers. So we're looking at putting the number at near 5,000 speakers when you add it all up and include the fact that there could be more. Um, it's part of the Gascon sub-branch of the Occitan language. The Occitan language is quite a widely spoken language across, or it used to be at least, across southern um, France and over the border into Spain but it's split up into a few different dialects that are arguably their own languages, one of them being Gascon. Uh, and Aranese being on the French side, um, sorry, on, on the Spanish side and not on the French side, uh, it's had some isolation and it's changed from Gascon so much that it's now recognised as a completely separate language from Occitan, but it sometimes is recognised as a dialect of Gascon. It depends who you speak to. Um, from what I looked on, on uh, Wikipedia and other sites, uh, there are differences between Gascon and Aranese. Um, here's a, a sample I found from the Language Museum. It's that same prayer, the, I believe it's the Our Father prayer. It's, it's um, a prayer that Christians have, so any Christians watching might know this one. It's the same one that I could only find for istro romanian in the last video. Um, I think this is a very interesting language, personally. Um, go and look it up. So uh, let's move on. Our next language is Monegasque. Uh, so, before we get onto this one, this is a dialect. 
and Monogasque is spoken in Monaco. Now, I put albeit by a tiny community, and you're going to see why in a second. So in the Principality of Monaco, which is a very small country, it's the second smallest country in the world, it has 20 speakers. It is very nearly dead, but seem as it's taught in schools as a heritage language, but no one really actually speaks it outside of school. Uh, it's probably not going to, to die as long as it has that protected status. But people will perhaps stop speaking it as a native language you know, in the next 50 years or so. Uh, it is effectively a, di a dialect of Junese or Ligurian, uh, which I found out recently that uh, Genoese and Ligurian are actually the same language. I thought they were different languages. Um, it is slightly unique from Genoese, but I just thought it was worth mentioning because it's interesting. Monaco has its own Romance language. Um, other than French or Italian, much of the other languages that are spoken there predominantly. Uh, so here is a sample of it. It doesn't look too different from Genoese, if you've ever seen Genoese, or Liguri for that matter. So I think it's time that we move on to our next language. The language that is taking the number two spot on this list is Romance, which is a Romance language unique to Switzerland. Uh, so this is where it's spoken. I've included the official name of the country. Now, because there are four official languages spoken uh, in Switzerland that have sort of governmental status, that being uh, Swiss German, Swiss French, Swiss Italian, they're all quite different to their normal counterparts, by the way, the standard ones in those countries, uh, and Romance, um, they couldn't decide which name to use for their country when they joined the UN, so they um, use the Latin term Confederatio Helvetica, which means Helvetian uh, Confederacy in Latin, which I think is really cool. But anyway, that's Switzerland. Uh, it has 60,000 speakers, and that's as of nine, 2019, so that's a fairly new statistic. Uh, it's a, no means of dying out at all. In fact, I do hear a lot more people talking about Romance these days, but it still doesn't get as much attention to it um, as a lot of the other Romance languages, which is why I put it on this uh, inverted commas forgotten Romance languages list. Uh, it is one of the four main official languages, as I mentioned, in Switzerland. It is completely unique to Switzerland, uh, but it is part of the Hreiter Romance language, uh, sub branch of languages, sorry, and uh, Latin and Friulian, which are found in northeast. Um, Italy, if you know, um, sort of north and east of Venice, that sort of area. So they're related to that. Uh, I also found out there's several different sub-branches, um, sub-dialects of Romance as well, that are slightly different from one another. Um, so this is the standard dialect here. I don't know what it says, but I know that first um, sentence is something about a wolf, just from my knowledge of Romance languages. Um, like that reminds me of La Volpo from Italian. Uh, so that's what it looks like, but bear in mind there are another five or six smaller dialects uh, that change the spelling ever so slightly. And for the last language on this list, we have Corsican. Now, I went to Corsica a couple of years ago, I was only there for a short time, and I went into the capital of Corsica, which is pictured uh, just here in the background. It's called uh, Ajaccio, although I think it does have different names depending on the dialects. Uh, and I was lucky enough to encounter Corsican being spoken. It's also on the road signs around places. Uh, so it is spoken uh, on the island of uh, Corsica, which, if you don't know, if you can go back here, is in the blue right there. And it's spoken in northern Sardinia as well but we'll get on to that in a second. Um, it's part of France, if you didn't know as well. There are 150,000 speakers of Corsican, uh, and that's as of 2013, and I'm pretty sure that number's going up because they've got brilliant preservation efforts. France is quite good at preserving um, sort of protected languages, dying languages in their own country, and its territory is thereof. Uh, so it's no danger of dying at all. Uh, Corsican is very similar to Italian, uh, it is a remnant of Corsica's Italian history when it used to be its own Italian city-state before the French took it over. 
um, and I've put down here this text. Now I just want to make uh, you aware again that similar to Romanche, there are many dialects of Corsican and when I was looking I was trying to figure out which dialects to choose. There's about eight or nine dialects and then there's another two that are spoken in northern Sardinia and they are really different from one another. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years some linguists start classing them as different languages. They are... I'm, I'm sure Corsican speakers, native Corsican speakers, can understand one another, but they are very different, or at least they look very different when they're written down, different orthography, but some of the words and the grammar was completely different. I chose the Ajaccio dialect, or I don't know, it's, they say it differently depending on the, the dialect. <laughs> I can't remember how they say in this one. I think it's um, a jacio in in this sort of dialect of Corsican, and that that's where it's spoken in the capital and uh, the surrounding areas. So that's where I heard it. Uh, so that's what it looks like, and it's a really beautiful language. If you ever get the chance to hear it, I suggest you go and look it up on YouTube. In fact, I'll put a link uh, in the description below to a Wiki Tongues video displaying Corsican. It is just absolutely beautiful. In fact, I'll put links for all the all the languages in this video. So that's all we have time for today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video as much as you enjoyed the previous video on the five inverted commas forgotten romance languages. Um, I'm not at all expecting this video to do as well. Um, I don't know why, I'm just not expecting it to do so. But who knows, this might do really well uh, and if you want that to happen, please do leave a like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, I would really appreciate that. It was so nice to just see a video do so well. It, it makes me feel like my channel is actually getting somewhere now. Um, and I couldn't be there without my viewers, of course. So please do consider subscribing, uh, but also leave a like on the video. Don't be so horrible to leave a dislike. What, what's the point? <laughs> I don't really care to be fair. And um, yeah, comment if you, if you want another one, if you want a part three, or if you want me to do a, like make this a, a proper series, I could do Germanic languages, Slavic languages, Semitic languages. I could go, I could go further with this, and uh, sort of shed light on, or at least show examples of languages that you might not normally think about. So uh, please do let me know if you enjoyed it, and I should hopefully see you next week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.